The one thing stopping you from getting Jack beyond your wildest dreams is sleep. And you like how I link the sleep and the dreams together? It's clever. But tips on how to optimize your sleep? Let's rewind the day. So first in line in in our quest to optimize sleep is going to be vitamin D, which is a which is a bit of a weird one because we're really starting our search for optimizing sleep right at the start of the day, and this is typically where we take vitamin D or actually absorb vitamin D. Vitamin D can be absorbed by sunlight, so we can't really do that at night. It has to be kind of in the a.m. slash early p.m. In any case, the reason why we're starting with vitamin D is because deficiencies in vitamin D are linked to a whole host of sleep disorders. Just one off the bat is sleep apnea also linked to fatigue myopathy and bone demineralization but we will more so be looking at the sleep quality or the sleep dysfunction effects with deficiencies with vitamin d findings in a 1989 study measuring people's objective sleep quality latency the time it takes you to fall asleep daytime dysfunction and the amount of time asleep whilst using vitamin d versus using a placebo revealed some results that suggest that we could benefit highly from implementing vitamin d into our day things like total sleep quality duration latency and daytime function all improved drastically whilst taking vitamin D. Now there are some anecdotal reports that if taken at night could actually disrupt sleep. So it may be better taking it early in the day just as a precaution. In my own experience when I've forgotten my vitamin D I've taken it at night I can actually report the same findings. It does disrupt my sleep quite a lot and I track it via this aura ring. So again the first phase of optimizing your sleep vitamin there's a V. Vitamin D. I take it at around 8am and I use this, which is just a spray. It's around 3000 IU, which is about the recommended dose. And then on top of that, I do go for a walk at 10 o'clock just to absorb natural vitamin D. But because we're in the UK, we can't necessarily get all of the vitamin D via the sun. So we do supplement two and you can do this year round. Now there is some evidence to suggest that taking vitamin D with caffeine could blunt the absorption of vitamin D. So what I do is take vitamin D at 8 a.m. I'll then have a coffee at around nine and then I'll go for a walk at around 10 just to cover my bases. Now I'm not saying the evidence is absolutely set in stone. I'm just taking a precaution. Anyway, next up in our search for the optimization of sleep. Oh, for those working at home right now, there is actually something called a sad light. They uh, they look like this. Now, sad is seasonal affective disorder. However, the light that you're emitting is similar, not exactly the same, but similar to sunlight, so you can absorb vitamin D that way. I thought I'd say that because that's another tool for your for your arsenal. Cool. Next up on our quest to optimize sleep is going to be caffeine, but we want to limit this the gold nectar eight hours pre-bed. That means if you're training in the PM, you might want to opt for something non-stim. Something uh, like this is absolutely perfect. Again, zero caffeine and Pump City. So you can get them, you know, I don't know, pumps. Now understand the, the first two tips I've given you happen 12 hours, 12 hours pre-sleep. But the old saying goes, fail to prepare or prepare to fail. So it's currently nine o'clock right now, and I'm already preparing for sleep, which is pretty mad when you think about it. But this, it, it looks nice, doesn't it? it? It looks it looks very cool, but it does hinder your sleep quality, hinders your sleep duration, it hinders your sleep latency. It, it pretty much, it pretty much ruins your sleep. We also have multiple studies insinuating that even if you think caffeine doesn't affect your sleep, you're being a bit stubborn, it most definitely does. But eight hours pre-bed is seemingly a good estimate for, for most people, and that's due to caffeine's half-life. In a 1992 study by Bratchel and Richer, they found that the clearance rate was just 0.078 LHKG, which means caffeine could be cleared anywhere between 1.5 and 9.5 hours depending on tolerance and overall mass so again you could drink this and 1.5 hours you could be completely clear of caffeine you could drink this now and be kind of buzzing nine and a half hours from now but eight hours pre-bed is generally a good idea for for most people again so that's vit d that's coffee i need to drink this because it's going a little bit cold but that's coffee and an hour later and then an hour later i'll go and get some natural Vitamin D. I feel uh, I feel like this is a day in a life. We'll run with it. 
Oh, I wonder if this is going to be out after my birthday. Yeah, it will be. Anyway, you, you know it's your birthday when, when the milk and stuff kind of runs out on your birthday. That's when you know it's kind of your birthday. Oh, also, guess my age. In the comment section, guess my age. This would be my current age, so I'd have had a birthday by now. Guess. Don't go on Instagram. I'm not going to tell you on Instagram. I'll, uh, I'll also use caffeine for its cognitive benefits and not necessarily for the, for the caffeine benefits. Although caffeine does have cognitive benefits, I'll use that. But anyway, we are going to do a couple of hours work and then we'll go and train. We have, uh, we have legs today, um, which I'm going to have non-stim pre-workout for because we're looking after our, our sleep, aren't we? En route to uh, en route to the coach gym, we have pre workout on deck. We have the non stim um, pre workout because again we're looking after our sleep. But um, yeah, so I'm basically just going to talk about training, nutrition, etc. Whilst being on prep. Um, so obviously, technically, if you've been following this journey, technically this is my 22nd week, kind of kind of week of dieting, right? Now I had like 20 weeks at the start, I had a three week break, and then I had um, these two weeks here. So again, in total 22 weeks, which is a bit of a long time. However, training seemingly has been untouched, which is good. I haven't been through a kind of a fat loss phase this long, and I didn't really know what to expect because the, the fat loss phases I've been through before have been very, very aggressive. So the, the kind of train performance has just taken a massive, massive, massive hit. Um, and I don't know whether it's the fact that it's longer, which means there's less of a rate of loss, which means, again, it's less aggressive, which means it doesn't tap into my training performance, which could, could mean I'm um, kind of saving more muscle tissue, hopefully. Um, I, I suspect we'll see when we get a bit leaner but again this is like the first week where I felt like something is happening with my body um, and I'll, I'll probably get some physique shots up um, whilst I'm there but yeah this is like the first day where I'm feeling like shit like yeah something is is working here um, I've kind of gone through this process and it's just like when is this gonna happen like when when am I gonna start seeing the hard work I've put in in this off season and again like it the last couple of weeks have just been a bit like not demotivating by any means but definitely like when when is this gonna happen is it gonna happen this week is it gonna happen next week I just I just kind of wanted to have a greater idea of when this is gonna happen and it happened this week so I'm very glad that has happened because again it's just a bit of a hit a bit of a a demotivator right but now I am very motivated to, to kind of kick this fat loss phase on. I just want to see what's underneath this on your arm. But yeah, anyway, again, um, I'm talking about training environment and I spoke to Steve on this um, earlier on today. But speaking of training environment, like this gym is just ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous. And I don't really play too much in the fact, or I don't really play too much in, in training environment or machines, etc. However, if you've got everything nailed, I think that it makes a, a marginal difference in kind of motivation and everything else like that. Um, so, highly worth it. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. Peace and love. Now it gets to around this time of night, which is about eight o'clock, and I will actively reduce my fluids. There's a very simple and logical reason why I do this. Basically, if I have a lot of fluid when I'm about to go to bed, I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night and go for a wee. So in our quest to optimize sleep, that very simple trick, it's not really a trick, that very simple tip helps a lot. Just stop weeing. Now, I wouldn't completely cut fluids, I would just actively reduce your fluids. Basically, don't drink like four liters at about 10 o'clock at night. You're going to get up and need a wee. Also, to bolt on another tip, it is about to be sunset, which means darkness. So to our, align ourselves with circadian rhythm, we're actually going to actively dim lights ourselves. Again, to align circadian rhythm, to align our body clock. We're not going to see night and then all of a sudden switch on every single light. 
We are going to actively, when the sun goes down, we are going down with it. So again, another tip to optimise sleep. About uno hour later, which is, which is one, one hour later, so current time is nine o'clock. Blue light blocking glasses are on. I mean, I did say dim the lights, but filming in the dark's a bit weird, although it will probably be a better vlog because face. Anyway, this is going to be my last meal, which means we limit our food. If we have this too close to bed, then it actually will deteriorate or reduce our sleep quality. Now, I had experience with this around three weeks ago, and I didn't put my finger on why my sleep was so crap. Now my aura ring was showing that my sleep temperature was elevated. Don't do that. Um, but my sleep temperature was elevated and I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Basically I had my meal, I, I had too much and also too close to bed, which means my body temperature rose because when you eat, you heat. That's my saying, if you hear anyone else say that, then just know that it's RT, Rainer Trainer, copyrighted. But when you eat, you heat. So that's what basically happened. So what I do right now is just cut my meals at around nine o'clock. It's about 10 past, please let me off. Um, but then, yeah, I'll cut this and then we're all good. So again, our quest to optimize sleep continues. And then I'm gonna switch off the light to stop the light. That doesn't rhyme, I'm just rhyming light with light. Now we get onto the, to the supplement portion of this vlog which I kind of I'm kind of a bit annoyed at myself because I started the a vlog with supplements but I kind of needed to get the vitamin D one in there but um, most of this is gonna be like sleep routine so what I'm actually doing is part of my sleep routine so switching off the lights reducing my liquids reducing caffeine etc that's kind of the routine um, and then supplements will just kind of add to the situation improve and again optimize your sleep so First on the list, ashwagandha. Now this will increase your sleep quality by reducing your anxiety. A lot of sleep quality will actually be reduced via anxiety. So just taking this, reduce anxiety, increase sleep quality. Next we have, oh, theanine, um, which we normally take with caffeine. And basically when you have caffeine, um, you have that kind of like really jittery feeling. Now this actually will, if you have this together, it will actually kind of limit that. Um, so typically you will have that for that reason. However, its main purpose is to reduce, again, anxiety. So pairing up the ashwagandha with this, again, reduces anxiety, increases sleep quality. Then we have the Support Max uh, Neuro, which is gonna be the PM version. Now this, again, does have ashwagandha, and it does actually have L-theanine in it as well, but it also has magnesium biglycinate and lemon balm. And uh, both the magnesium and the lemon balm actually contribute to increased sleep quality. Again, optimizing. And now we move on to the like sedative. You should only really take this if you're kind of jet lagged. Don't take it daily. This isn't me saying take these daily. This is me saying, please take them as and when, but we also have melatonin, which you cannot actually get in the UK. You need to import it because I'm a hustler. I just bought it from a site in the US, got it imported over, but melatonin. And then we also have um, valerian extract in the form of calms. This is actually very cheap. Um, it's about like three pound and you get about 90, I think. No, 200. But if you're feeling jet lagged, you can reset body clock via melatonin and then uh, a sedative such as valerian extract. But again, these are not daily beaters. These are, these are, if your sleep is pretty whack or out of sync. So if you want to reset body clock, have these. Oh, notice this is uh, no caffeine. Again, caffeine cut off. Beware of, um, of drinks like this, such as Pepsi Max, just normal because obviously it has caffeine. Also beware of things like dark chocolate as well because that contains caffeine and again, that will hinder sleep. And that would not be optimal in trying to optimize our sleep. Now, now this, this next section looks like a little bit of a porn audition, but 
The next section is going to be the actual sleep thing, the, the sleep environment. So what we want to do is make sure the window is open. We want this room to be very, very cool. So you can also do things like have a fan on or just or just simply open the window. I personally do do both. But basically you want this room to be like a cave except just not wet because that would just be super weird. And basically I'll come up here around half an hour pre-bed and just make sure the window's open, the fan's on. Again, this room is very cool. Half an hour pre-bed, I'll actually not even touch my phone. No TVs will be on, so no blue light is gonna be emitted even if I had blue light blockers on. No blue light is emitted. Again, that will hinder your sleep quality and also your sleep latency, so the time it takes you to go to sleep. And all of that is pretty much your, your sleep optimized as much as humanly possible, as much as practically possible. I mean, you can go a bit further than this. Like you could have like eye masks, you could have like hot baths pre-bed because believe it or not, to get your body down to a cool, cool body temperature, you could actually have a hot bath and that would actually sink you right down very, very quickly. You could also do things like coat your bed in uh, in like lavender spray. However, um, Nat's fairly allergic to lavender, so I don't think that, like it will be optimal for my sleep. It's a bit selfish that she's allergic to lavender, but hey, that's the situation we're dealt with. But anyway, I'll tell you if my sleep is optimized via the aura ring tomorrow morning. But in any case, Good night. Good sleep. Yeah, you? Sleep optimized. Peace.